Welcome to Dynamic Foundry Group. I'm Sandeep Kulkarni. Welcome you to this small video on chill and wedge testing in gray cast iron melting. I'm thankful to Mr. Sangram Bhosle and Mr. Murdekar and Mr. A.S. Zoshi for their support and technical guidance and permission for using their some of the photographs during making this video. I have also taken the references from IS, BS and ASTM standard as well. What is chill and wedge test? Wedge and chill test is qualitative test for checking nucleation in the metal before pouring. We can also use it as a preventive method to judge metallurgy. Wedge and chill is used for the inspection of the metal to identify the grade of the casting, improve machinability, see the effect of inoculation after pouring. What is chill and waste test? In the past ancient time, when there were no spectrometer and perolabs available, metal testing was done with the help of wedge and chill method to control metal quality. You can use it along with charge calculations to judge the nucleation level in the metal. In fact, it is the cheapest test available to judge nucleation level in the metal. It required practice to get mastery over waste test and I request you to start it today itself and soon you will begin huge confidence in the metallurgy due to this additional hands-on. Why it is called as wedge? It is called or named as wedge considering its shape, which is having thick section at one end and edge type section at other end. This slide represents the design of the chill and wedge with respect to base, height, length and degree. You can take this reference to design your chill core or chill mold. Here W that is the width should not be exceed half of base that is B. You have to remember it while inspecting and making the chill wedge. This also represents some of the parameter how the design of chill or wedge is considered. You can refer it or use it for designing your chill core or chill mold. Core box or mold for chill and wedge. It is prepared in shale core or in green sand based on availability. Design for making such core box or mold pattern is given in next slide. Ensure enough wall for the chill core or mold is available for the solidification. This slide represents some of the pictures for core and core box for the chill and wedge. This slide represents the mold for pouring wedge and chill in green sand. How to pour chill? Land wedge. Preheat the spoon before taking metal. The test specimens shall be poured at a fairly uniform temperature. The temperature should be 1350 to 1400 degrees centigrade. Do not pour chill above 1400 degrees centigrade. Take care of slack free, clean metal taken for the pouring chill sample. Do not take hold or superheated metal for chill test directly, as it will show you a white structure. This will misguide you for the metal quality and hence it is important to take sample with some inoculation when metal is got superheated or hold to get correct interpretation of the metal quality. After pouring, wait for another 30 to 45 seconds and then 
break the core or mold and take out chill. Quench that chill in water as soon as it is completely solid. The quenching shall be done carefully to avoid cracking of the wedge. This can be done by dipping about one third portion from the base side of the wedge in the water. The wedge is then gradually quenched in the water. After quenching, it is rubbed in the sand to get dried totally, free from moisture. Verify the water temperature is less than 40 degrees to get chill cooled uniformly. Uniform cooling of the chill is important here to get consistent result and good structure. After chill gets cool, break it with the hammer such that fracture is straight and midway of the length. Breaking method is shown in our further slides. You can see here how to break the chill. There is a support and on the support chill is kept and then the hammer is put from above. You can see another couple of slides where you can able to find the way chill can be broken. How to inspect the wedge and chill? Check the width of chilling and compare it with your casting wall. Roughly, there will be a basically four areas or sections in the chill or wedge. Top aged white portion will represent white cast iron. Second portion represents dense structure, which represents density of metal. It basically decides your casting hardness. Further, it shows open grain structure, which represents the mortal structure. And finally, the base bottom portion of the chill will represent the gray structure in the chill. In below slide, you can see the structure in the wedge and chill. This slide also represents the way it contributes to the microstructure in gray cast iron. So you can see in this slide, you can see four different structures. That is the bottom structure is white cast iron. Second one represents type D graphite. The third one is graphite with type B. And finally, the, bot, bot, uh, the, the bigger structure that is A type graphite, that is we ca call as a gray structure, which is at the base, that is the bottom of the chain. Interpretation of the chill and which Chill for bath metals will always be having some white portion as it is not undergone nucleation and also shows some effect of superheating of metal while melting. But after inoculation, that is nucleation process, it will show reduced white portion in the wedge. In next few slides, you can see the difference or the comparison of bath chill and nucleated chill. You can see here on the left is the, the bath that is unnucleated chill where the white portion is higher. Whereas in the second portion, that is the, on the right side, you can see the white, reduced white portion chill, that is the final chill or nucleated chill. This picture also show the effect of inoculation. You can see on my right is the white portion is on higher side, but with the inoculation effect, the white portion got getting reduced and chilling tendency is also getting reduced. Always keep in mind that after the metal is superheated for taking slack or for cleaning the furnace or due to holding of metal, due to breakdown or power cut, top edge portion of the chill is expected to be white. Here, putting some pig iron or ferrosilicon before tapping is recommended to get better nucleation and to get good results in machinability. How to measure the wedge or chill? We have already seen this before. That is the whited structure, mortal structure, and at the, at the base, there is a gray structure which is available in the chill. You can see how the chill is measured is the width, W. We are 
measuring chill width for getting it interpreted. So this is the right method of checking the chill. That is chill is checked for its width W. It is not checked for its length that is L. Here you are seeing length has been measured which is the wrong method or it is incorrect way of checking wage or chill. Now I am representing you a couple of chills with different composition. This chill represents the composition carbon 3.23, silicon 1.67, manganese 0.7, chromium 0.18, sulfur 0.067. Here you can see the chilling portion is little higher with carbon and silicon on lower side. The metal is little hard, you can say. In the pic this picture, you can see the composition 3.35 carbon, silicon 1.77, manganese 0.72, chromium 0.12, sulfur 0.072. The chilling portion, that is the white portion, is reduced. You can see with the better composition or higher composition or with the uh, better nucleation, you can see the chilling portion is got reduced. So this is from my side. Thank you very much. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, before I take leave, I will request you to please like this video, subscribe our Dynamic Foundry Group channel and get 